production has been going within the petroleum sector, there is the need to ensure that the outflow of reserves are not basically affecting our outlook as a nation. So there's the need to institute a policy to control uh, possibly how much of the nation, especially dollar terms, uh, buying for outside the country. At that then time, those times, it was difficult for government to get dollars to give to these oil marketing companies and also exporters and suppliers. But it appeared that bringing this policy, they believe, has some way affected the stability of the currency. And I'm here with Caleb. Caleb, I'm sure when this policy began, many people were asking, uh, we have gold as a nation, we were blessed, uh, we'd have, we have oil as well as a nation, but why is it that uh, we have to go that direction? Uh, I think it, well, it all started from our exchange rates. Yes. So if you can go to the first slide, mm -hmm. our exchange rates. Mm -hmm. so it's, uh, as you can see on the screen, yeah. the exchange rates was very bad at a point. And the, gov the government's policy to address that was the goal for oil policy. Mm -hmm. So because of how we saw our exchange was going down, they decided to do something about it and with the goal for oil policy that they did. Amazing. So why we got to that particular policy was because of the exchange rates, as Caleb has mentioned. In 2010, we were having, the city was around one city, 47 pesos. If you look, well, we, it became quite stable from 2021 to 2020. We saw some depreciation happening there with the city going up after the, the year 2020. It went up and we saw that in 2022, the government's policy then, the, the city was to, uh, a city, a dollar was then six city in 2022. And that was where the policy was set into motion. The government realized that if action wasn't done immediately, there's gonna be a constraint, especially in how our city will perform. So straight away, the central bank together with the National Petroleum Authority in collaboration with the produce buying company, that is PMC, PMMC, uh, that is a precious minerals marketing company, who decided that there's the need to bring out a program to help show up. And that was the good for oil policy, showing that no longer would dollars be used to basically taken out of the country, but there will be the need to exchange uh, our gold as a nation for this for uh, crude uh, oil outside the country. So do, uh, that's what we got there. So I'm seeing a circle here. What happened within this period then? Yeah, so, so, that's, so that's like you rightly said, in 2020, so as you can see, from 2010 yes. to 2021, the city was, the depreciation was, was going up, mm -hmm. or started at a slow pace. Mm -hmm. So the government, and then in 2021, yes. so that it started going up very sharply. And that's when the government decided to step in. So the path we've circled, that's where it started going up very sharply. Mm -hmm. And it was, a very, it, was, it was a big shock to the market. So when this happened, that's when we saw um, four prices go up to about 20 CDs per liter. And that was serious. Mm -hmm. So the government decided to implement a measure to, to prevent it from going further. And in 2023, after where well, you can see the red door has ended, that's where the policy started. In Many will ask whether the collaboration between four price and the city depreciation what is the interlink there? Yeah, so every month we spend a huge amount of money to purchase a huge amount of cities to purchase dollars to import our um, oil needs into the country. So every month we spend so many dollars. And because we don't have the dollars, when we are going for our oil products, it creates pressure on the city, which eventually leads to the more depreciation of the city. So yeah. the government decided that, okay, instead of using our cities to go and look for dollars, why don't we just exchange our gold? and bring in oil instead. And that's what they did to try and reduce the pressure on the city. As to whether it's been effective, it's something we'll be bringing you up-to-date information right here on the show. One thing you realize is that from 2023, we saw the city going up to the dollar, selling at 14 cities, 65 pesos to 15 cities, 67 pesos. It went at high as around 17 cities. And that was, uh, in the black market, it was quite, quite much higher than what we are seeing here. But nonetheless, we look at a very interesting amount, which is basically, well, yes, that's the man right there. Kofi AJ joining us on Zoom right there. So Kofi will bring his convers the conversation here, which will be seeing the total monthly cost of import of oil. We are looking at this figure here, which is $400 million. Basically, our economy is being powered every month government spending $400 million. We are looking at the factories. We are looking at industries. We are looking at our electricities because trust me, most of our thermal uh, power or thermal machines need for to pump them. So I'm seeing this figure here. Let me bring Kofi AJ into the conversation. Kofi, 
if you could hear me, what do you make of this assessment? Can you hear me again? Yes, I can. Your question again. What do you make of this figure, the 400 million being spent monthly on uh, crude or fuel import? Well, just like here in Caleb said, this is the reason why the government decided to introduce a gold for oil deal, uh, just to make sure that every month you don't have such significant uh, amount of dollars leaving the shores of Ghana. And they looked at the data on both sides in terms of how much we are exporting in terms of gold currently is over, you know, $7 billion. And then you have, you know, the country spending so much importing uh, crude or refined crude as well. What we are talking about here is refined crude because as a country, we uh, export crude as well. And so why don't we exchange the gold we have, just like Caleb said, uh, for oil? So instead of um, finding dollars to buy um, the refined crude, we end up using a gold to, to rather exchange for, 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 the, for the oil. $400 million is significant. And it's, it's, if you look at our import bill, uh, in terms of oil uh, import, it's, it's actually the biggest component of the country's import bill every year. And so finding such policies to reduce the amount of dollars that leaves the shores of Ghana was very, very important. But we've seen that even after the introduction of the gold for oil deal, which was supposed to solve two things, uh, you know, uh, ensure that the city was stable and then also to keep fuel prices at a stable uh, you know, raise fuel prices. We can say that uh, since the implementation of the gold for oil deal, I have not done any regression analysis to know whether it is as a result of the gold for oil deal. But what we know is that after the introduction of the program, if you look at the um, the trend analysis of fuel prices, okay, uh, it's been stable right. relative to other years. But one other component that has not really, really responded to uh, the program has to do. Uh, uh, with the uh, with the stability of the city, which well, is the Kofi, we will come to the stability of the city very shortly. But before we do that, let's look at uh, let's let our viewers understand the outlook, the outlook basically of how the Gold for Oil program was projected to behave, and you will see that on the screen shortly right now in the old blog. The Gold for Oil program, G40 program, was supposed to begin from the Bank of Ghana's territory through the PMMC, that is a precious mineral marketing company, as you can see on your screens now, who will buy the gold in CDs. Then the gold will be used to buy the oil, which will later, the oil is then received by the bulk oil storage and transport company, that is BOSS, who received the oil, then sells it back to BOSS and sell in cities. So basically, the city is circulated in the country without dollar being packaged. Caleb, what do you say to that? Yes, yeah, so it starts with the Bank of Ghana, mm -hmm. and that's where the issue, that, that's where the issue came up actually, because the Bank of Ghana and the PMMC don't have a, a, a formal contract. So that's raising some eyebrows somewhere, but that's where the policy starts from the Bank of Ghana and PMMC. They buy the gold in CDs to prevent the, the, um, the demand for dollars. So from there, they use the gold to buy oil products. And once BOSS approves the oil products, they import them into the country. And from there, BOSS sells it to the BDCs, the bulk distributors, the, all, all the distributors. Mm -hmm. And from there, the distributors take it to the OMCs who sell it on the market for us. It's been interesting. Stakeholders, researchers, institutions have always been demanding consistently the formulation, the formula by which this policy is being implemented. There's been conversation also that the actual amount that these suppliers who get this have, does not really end up at a central bank. And we're hoping to get that output from the central bank. Consistently during the MPC, the, the, uh, the governor has indicated that indeed this policy is making huge uh, impact on our whole economic outlook, bringing stability in four prices. But let's look at four prices. If it's indeed done what we expected it to do as a uh, policy. Now let's look. Take us through this data. Um, so with the last updates we got from the Ministry of Finance in 2023, that's from the, media, from the, from the budget, we had... We had purchased some 17.89 tons of gold, and that translated into 1.14 billion Ghana cities, and that's significant. Indeed, and, yeah. that is 17.89 tons of gold. That is huge. Basically, 
comparatively 1.7 billion. Kofi, someone will say these are huge chunks of money and the program has so far seen the output of this nature. But what outlook does it give to investors who basically see these numbers and decide that indeed we have to move forward with a policy of this nature? Well, Winston, certainly if you look at the fuel price aspect, the prices have been stable at the pumps for the past uh, you know, two years. And that tells you that the gold for oil program maybe is really working for the export price of fuel. But one, you said we will come to the SGN bit, but in terms of giving investors confidence, uh, if you are an OMC or a BDC, mm -hmm. uh, what you know is that uh, there's always that you know, gap between demand and supply and the gold for oil deal is supposed to come in and handle the supply side. We know of the demand side. And so once you have demand, you know, supply meeting demand, you should expect that fuel prices will be stable. And one other thing that has really helped the Ghanaian economy in terms of holding the prices of fuel at a constant rate is the fact that this year and then the latter part of last year, we did not really have, you know, the, uh, the global, you know, uh, crude prices going up, the Brent crude price going up. It's still hovering within uh, the regions below $100, uh, you know, uh, per barrel. And that's, that's really, really good for, for the oil market. So whilst we are looking at the domestic uh, components, such as the gold for oil deal, one other external component that has really, really helped the uh, price of fuel to be stable has to do with the fact that on the global scene, you know, prices have been fairly stable this okay. year. All right, Kofi. Now, I wanted to look up the gold for oil sales. This is a data that was produced in the uh, 2023 outlook of the bulk oil and storage uh, company as boss. Uh, in 2023, they recorded sales of gold up to 9 billion Ghana cities. And that is a huge, huge figure that you can see there. And that tells you that under the gold for oil policy, this is how much boss has received in terms of crude oil and how much they've received. The circle still goes on. We'll look at this figure analyzing and based on the current impacts on the four prices. Now, Caleb, I see when the gold for oil policy began in the month of June 2022. Since then, the trajectory seems to be being stable from that angle. What do you say to that? Yeah, so as Kofi was hinting to, before the gold for oil policy was introduced, you could see how four prices were volatile. The market was very not stable, was unstable. So after the gold for oil policy, we could see... That, that was this high hitting around exactly. 27 or 20, yes, 23 yes, exactly. uh, cities per barrel then. Yes. So after the gold for oil policy was introduced, you could see that um, four prices dipped a bit and has been relatively stable throughout. But, you know, analysts have been saying that at that point, the prices of crude, um, of Brent's crude in the markets had reduced. And that's, and that was why the price of four in Ghana had also reduced. Mm -hmm. So it was not really because of the introduction of the gold for oil policy uh -huh. that resulted in the drop in the price of oil. Some will wonder how direct impact or what direct impact does it have, especially when four prices go up. When we look at four prices, where especially when the four prices go up, directly as a marketer who produces goods and services, you see your transport fare go up directly. Also followed by production costs. Whatever you input in getting your product out, Trust me, it will go high. Your cost of production increases directly affecting your final price. So if you go to the market, the market one will tell you that buying it from the supplier, the middle, from the farmer, the middle uh, trader, all of them cumulatively constitute the final tomato price that you get for five CD for just one. Ten CDs, you get three. And that is what you see. So that explains the direct impact of four prices. And that also directly affects the condition of living. Kofi, what do you say to that? It's when the prices of uh, fuel changes, it has, you know, a snowballing impact on so many aspects of the economy. And uh, this year, we've seen that prices have been stable, but once in a while, we've had fluctuations here and there. And even for that small margin we've seen this year, we've seen how that has affected uh, the producer price in this, you know, figures released by the Ghana Statistical Service, where we are talking about somewhere 29% for the month of July. That tells you that although we have policies like the gold for oil in place, you know, some slippages uh, within the uh, fuel you know, sector or the fuel space has actually found its way to affect the cost function of uh, producers. And so just like you said, and just like Caleb put it, when you have fuel prices, you know, either going up or down, 
they have a you know a snowballing effect on the the market and i say normal consumers i say as, as an ordinary Ghanaian, you feel the impact when transport fares are up every trader will also want to increase the price of their their, their wares so Kelly, when we go to the market, one very important aspect that people consistently have not really got into, the reality of the inflation as well, how inflation has also led to this case. If you look at the, the basket, four is part of it. If you look at the basket, transport is part of it. And consistently we've seen uh, for quite the past three months or four months, we've not seen any increment in four prices. Um, so it's it all built up. So sometimes it's not starting when four prices increase at the moment. It starts a while back because before the goods and services come to the market, they pass through several channels. So before the good comes, before the products in the market are available for the public, they have been transported from somewhere a while back. So with all that, all that um, results in a relatively stable price we have. So if the price of four increases at, at this moment, we're not feeling now, so later in the, in the year. So that explains the pass-through effect of poor prices going on. But we also want to understand, based on this policy, there's been calls to open up, especially the transactional nature and the quality of the contract. During this parliamentary seating, especially when the deputy uh, governor of the central bank was questioned about the good for oil policy, he reiterated that the policy is in its best shape and they also the the, current, the vice president also reiterated that there's going to be an expansion of the policy because he calls it an innovative, uh, genius policy. But we've seen so far how it has also helped stabilize certain factors in the, uh, the oil marketing companies. Seeing them supply consistently is something we are looking forward to. But also, let's take a look at what the Auditor General's report had to say about that. So in the 2023 Auditor General's report, he found that no formal agreement between the Bank of Ghana and the PMMC was available. This means that even though the policy is in place, there's no strict formula that they are following. And because there are so many players involved in this policy, it makes the whole thing um, shrouded in secrecy, as some analysts are calling for at the moment. So there needs to be a formal structure in place that you can follow to. So if you breach that, we know there are sanctions for what you breach, and we know where the money is going to as well. You're talking about the money, where the money is going to. When I did a research on that, and some articles pointed out the, the likelihood of illicit financial flow because of the loopholes in the system. And also, they, they also are due to the fact that if the policy is not well structured and made quite transparent, it, there will be cases where it may not be sustainable. The initial conversation was whether the policy will last more than it's been projected. The governor himself said it's a short-term means or process but if you look at the overall demand of or import of fuel based on this policy do you think it makes any much difference totally and so if you look at the literature on the gold for oil policy and its current form they found that it's believed that even though um, oil imports have a significant influence on the city in the short term in the long term it doesn't have any significant influence on it so the gold for oil policy is not um, a panacea you know, to the, our challenges with the city. We need to fix the structural problems with our economy before we can fix the problems with the city. So the goal for oil policy is a short-term measure and not a long-term measure. And it's backed by some of the literature we've been seeing so far. Also, concerns have been raised based on how uh, the dealings with these good small-scale miners who yeah. have been licensed small-scale miners who are going to be dealt with by the precious mining uh, company who are where they buy the gold together and do the transaction from that angle. Many also have raised environmental concerns. Is it legitimate? Um, for the environmental concerns, well, I think the Bank of Ghana and PMMC, they only buy from a licensed um, mining company, a small scale mining company that is licensed. So I think the Bank of Ghana and the PMMC will do their due diligence and ensure that the gold they are buying from, the, the company they are buying from, adhere to all the, all the standards. But nonetheless, we see the reverse. We see the, the, some of the, the environmental pollution in some areas, and some have adduced them to such uh, actions, basically from illegal mining activities going on. But Kofi, uh, I'm sure you've seen the article from the Auditor General's report. And one thing that they made mention of is that there is no dedicated offshore bank account for the program. Well, that's very problematic. And then I always say that 
the gold for oil deal was supposed to solve two things, and now we've spoken a lot about the fuel aspect. But one other aspect that possibly we've not really gone deep is the exchange rate situation where the gold for oil deal was supposed to help the city stabilize. But the reason why the gold for oil deal, the chief for oil, has not really been able to hold the city, uh, you know, constant, has to do with some of these loopholes that we are actually talking about. And so you put on, you put on the screen that nine billion CDs worth of gold purchases. You ask yourself, gold is a store of value. And so if anybody has gold and they are exchanging it for CD, you should know that they will definitely be looking for another store of value, which is maybe higher than the CD, because the CD is losing a value and it's no longer becoming a store of value. And so if somebody exchanges gold for CD, you should know that that person will exchange CD for dollar. So in essence, it rather places a certain amount of demand on the fewer dollars available in the system. And so you see that although you are solving the, uh, the fuel price, whatever thing with the gold for oil, on the other hand, you are rather, you know, people who have gold are exchanging it for the city, which is constantly losing the value. And so you should know that these people will exchange the city for the dollar because they will want to hold a certain commodity, uh, you know, currency is a commodity, a certain commodity that will be a store of value, especially when they see that the city is not really doing well against major trading currencies. And so that's the reason why I feel that the gold for oil deal has not really been strong in helping stabilize the city because of that loophole that you find in there. Because people are exchanging gold, which is a precious mineral, mm -hmm. for a currency that cannot really, you know, be stabilized or even just three or four months definitely they will exchange that currency for for something which is which is precious and in this case the dollar is what they will go for i mean some have also raised concerns basically the circle where the money or transaction goes through from the central bank going back to boss boss coming down to per, per, um, the distributors that is the four distributors pdcs who distribute to the omcs oil marketing companies the circle continues where the money is supposed to return back to the central bank so now many have also raised concern in how much can the central bank record as revenue based on the gold for oil policy apart from what we are able to report from the boss report that they annually represent based on the transaction so definitely when you have the central bank involved in such transactions definitely definitely um you know institutions like the imf are actually suspecting foul play in here that's why they want the the Bank of Ghana to be completely out of this gold for oil deal. They feel it should be it should be run in a certain way. So if you look at the IMF program, one of the recommendations is that slowly the Bank of Ghana should get out of the space in terms of the gold for oil deal because it could be one way of financing government expenditure. Because definitely it has to do with fiscal space. And and if you have the central bank, which over the years we've seen them writing of about 60 billion Ghana cities, some, somewhere around $5 billion worth of debt. They just write it off. Debt that government owes them. And so if you have them in such a space like that, uh, it definitely you know, uh, brings a certain negative bell, and that's why the Bank of Ghana wants them out. In terms of how we can track such transactions, this is, is becoming very difficult, especially knowing from the Auditor General support that there's no... Uh, you know, that specialized or uh, laid out procedure in terms of the recording and laws around this gold for oil deal and what have you. So definitely such absence of robust and, and, and rigorous uh, process will mean that right. this will create loopholes and people will take advantage of that. All right, Kofi, before you go, you're looking good. How is, how is it going there? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, thank you, Winston. Uh, I think you and Caleb are also looking. You are looking <laughs> dapper as well. As you can see, I'm not in Thai or anything. So. <laughs> yeah, still not beyond the numbers. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so you're still here with us as we're bringing the curtains down on the show. We would like you to understand that the policy has consistently been in existence. The, the vice president has made a, a critical statement during his presentation of uh, the whole... Uh, what is it? Manifesto? manifesto. Yeah, manifesto. That indeed, this is a policy he intends to sustain. We'll be breaking in that policy consistently to bring 
its impact on the various sectors and also the understanding on how that has affected our life as individuals based on the current state of four prices in the market, and the international prices coming in, and the overall outlook of the policy. Caleb, what do you say? We, we, when you look at the policy so far, I think in my suggestion has been quite effective based on the minimal performance on that. Well, I think, I think the Bank of Ghana has some work to do to ensure that this, this program has covered all bases. We need to make sure that this program is legal and everything behind is correct. Wonderful. My name is Winston Taki and I was joined on Zoom by Kofi AJ and today with Kaleva as always. Yeah, it was good to be here. Always. Now let's take a look and see what other data we have for our viewers.